this week, keep all asked us to talk about autism. So many of you have asked that we talk about autism, and um, one of them being our lovely friend Emily O'Sullivan. So we thought we would chat today about autism, how it's impacted our lives, um, and and pretty much what we know and what we have seen to do with it. So how old were you when you first sort of displayed autistic traits? I'd probably say from being born. Like my mum, my mum and dad told me that when I was born, that I was really I came out. I mean, I know a lot of babies come out screaming, <laughs> but apparently I came out like more than screaming. <laughs> well, I'm sure they said something like the nurse said um, that I was dead loud or something. So that should have been the first thing that they knew they were getting a the warning. Warning sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then it probably, because I never had those kind of like, I wouldn't say I had behavioural issues as no. such when I was a young child. I mean, my mum and dad might say different, but I'm not sure whether I had behavioural issues or, or I, I know inside myself that from a child, for example, little things that I couldn't do, I couldn't brush my teeth um, in like a normal way. Um, and I still can laces still to this day I've always really struggled with laces has it always been like fine motor skill like yeah. anything needed sort of coordination and, but not even just coordination mate I mean I'm, I'm talking just getting a jar out of the cupboard let me guess do you go for the back one yeah but I don't see all the stuff that's in front of it. I just go straight in and boom. Except the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell from the tail, the tail. Yeah. tail. I, I, I have a nickname for Jo of Bulldozer Bertha because she will see something in that very moment and get so excited by it that the majority of us would go to the shelf in the supermarket shop and pick the first one. No. Not all the guys. Bulldozer straight in with gusto to the back shelf and launches it through. And then everything is tumbling off the shelf. And she, she has this amazing ability to pick the shelf that's got breakables on. It's never teddy bears or duvets. It's breakables shattering everywhere. Yeah, we've had a few incidents. Always in Sainsbury's and always in front of the member staff. I feel like, it, I think, it's been, I think that it must be daunting having a member staff, so my brain must say like, just, 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 but to be honest, I don't even think, I don't even know it's a member staff, I just get excited. I always remember being on my reports, it used to constantly say, and it did throughout my entire, like, academic career, or whatever, that's what they say, isn't it? I don't know like, why. Yeah, whatever it was. Um, it, it would always say, like, Joe is really bright or really clever or really good at the work, mm. but she's a massive distraction. Or she, like, I had a teacher called Mr. Glover, and he used to always say to me, Well, he had he had three things, but I can't remember one of them. But he always used to say to me, Joanne, I'm keeping you under surveillance. Wise man. Yeah, and there was another of um, oh, I can't remember, but he used to have these things that he used, Joanne, you need a tranquilizer. So, so this day, I could probably put online, Joanne, you need a tranquilizer. And people, and people would from know. school would know. <laughs> that was what Mr. Glover used to say to me. reference was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like, through school, did did your teachers ever say, like, we think there's something more than no. she's just a bit disruptive and a bit loud? No, but I think that it was different back then. Because obviously we're talking, like, you know, 20 plus years ago. Yeah, Do you and, know what I mean? and you just, like you just said, you were academic, like you, yeah, yeah. Your, your performance, like you would get the work right. You knew what you were doing. Yeah, and I mean, to the to anyone looking in, it looked like I had good friendships and stuff. Yeah, they didn't mm. see what went on being be, be, in here. Yeah, yeah. Be, be all the service. So like, I always, all I ever wanted was for people to like me. Mm. 
literally from being a really really young age all I ever wanted was for people to like me and I would get myself really worked up if I thought anyone didn't like me or if my friend like was was being I remember incidents in primary school of like when my friends I fall out with my friends and it was like literally like the end of the world like the worstest yeah. thing ever I think everybody wants people to like them but I feel like your need for that was far greater it was massively amplified yeah, to yeah. like a normal person I hate saying it's, normal it's, not, it's, it's normal it's hard isn't it um because I I, I I don't see anything as abnormal really. No, no. Um but but I always had a massive love for animals and like I wanted everybody to like me but then at the same time it was too stressful for me to have friends. So it was always like turmoil going on inside my head. And it still is now. Well, not now to this day, because I'm okay decently. But that but, turmoil is that do they like me? Have I done something wrong? Are they going to fall out with yeah. me? Yeah. Is that how it's always been? That's yeah. where those thoughts that you've had. Yeah, always. Okay, so we've heard a little bit about how you were in school. But how was it at home? Like, how how were things like with your mum and dad? How did they deal with things? Well, I've always very easily got frustrated. So, like, something tiny could frustrate me. Mm. It could be anything. It, 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 I mean, normally it involved food, but but anything could frustrate me. So like if somebody had eaten something that I was expecting, I was going home to have, even if it maybe wasn't mine, but if I had in my head, oh yeah, when I get home tonight, I'm going to have, 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 have that pizza pocket or whatever I out think of the freezer. that is pretty annoying whether you're autistic or not. I know, but like I would have... So, so imagine like being annoyed about little things, but then it being on a much bigger scale. Yeah. And it's not so much annoyance because I don't harbour any anger or no. any ill will to anybody. Like, like you could do anything in the world to me, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't like have uh, have those feelings inside me. Mm. I just know that it is socially right for me to be annoyed about certain things. Yeah. So I just. I just say I'm annoyed. Do you know what yeah. I mean, though? And I think that's always been a hard thing because with my mum and dad, I've always just been able to just be mm. be me. Mm. And that being me consisted of never being able to sleep, being terrified of being alone. So, like, if I woke up, say, on, like, a Saturday morning, so I'm talking when I was getting a bit older now, if I woke up on a Saturday morning, and I went downstairs, and my mum and dad had gone out. What gone out before you got before up? Before I got yeah. up, I would have an absolute breakdown. I'd be crying my eyes out, ringing them. Where are you? Where are you? But if you left me a note, I mean, over over the years, we came up with strategies and things like that work. So they would like leave me a note and stuff saying, "Pops out. We'll be back in half an hour." Yeah. So you know they've yeah. gone. You know they would. They're coming back. Yeah. That's vanished. Like I don't care. Um, and, I, and I've had this before in the past with friends. Like, I don't care if you go for three weeks. But yeah. if you say to me, okay, just to let you know, I'm going to be gone now for three weeks. You're not going to hear from me for three weeks. Then I'm absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. But if you just disappear for three weeks, then I will have an absolute meltdown. It's not a, it's, it's about the, like, not knowing what's around the corner. And you, and you like to know when people have reached that destination. Yeah, and yeah, when they're I coming do. back, like, text me when you're leaving. Like, even for me, and I'm sure you do, and, well, I know you do it with your dad when he leaves work. Yeah, like, I, I do. have got home. I do it when my mum and dad come yeah. to take away. You like I to know to. That yeah. where people have gone. Not really what they're doing. I, no, I don't care. That safe. Well, if you turned <laughs> on to me tomorrow and said, I'll be away all this weekend... You've I would say, well, where are you going if you went, oh, well, I don't, you know, I'm not really telling not anyone. Telling you. Okay. That, when are you, you back? Know, yeah, you know, that, when are you that back? Like, that, you... That's for me the you... issue, yeah. is knowing if it's going to involve me, like, obviously, or instead of me sitting there thinking, oh, well, is she going to be in work on Monday? Is she, you know, and speculating. Yeah, yeah. I like to know, and I suppose it's the same with work. Um, I made completely new friends when I got to college. But I always felt like I was like seen as a bit of like the weirdo. Like, but did you make those friends easily? 
I made friends easily. Making friends wasn't a problem, but keeping friends. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with relationships. Like, because obviously people, I will hide a lot of like my traits and stuff because I worry about what people will think. Yeah, you try and be somebody. Yeah, like you think that other person wants you to yeah, be yeah, yeah. show yourself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it it was it was dead hard really, like maintaining friendships because once people would think, oh, she's controlling, but I, but I, but I, honestly, I, I, it wasn't about that. Like people would say, like, oh no, she she's controlling because they thought that me texting them a few times to say what are you doing, what are you doing was being, yeah. but it wasn't yeah. that. It was, and I tried to explain at the time, and I've struggled with this like my whole life. That unfortunately, I need to know if it, I'm not bothered if it doesn't involve me. I'm not bothered. Mm. But like for example, you know, like we have like a, a, a weekly phone call, our weekend phone calls, mm -hmm. and I'll always ring that when I get up in, in the morning and on the weekend. Well, like oh, and we'll I always know, wait till you've seen me online. I know she's been online <laughs> for a bit though. Yeah. Like and when I know all this, yeah. Sometimes we text early and then a couple hours later I'll yeah, ring we'll you or whatever. Um, like say for example, so this is the difference. Say you, well, I mean the difference happens. So when you say to me I'm going to your mum's, oh, I, yeah, I yeah. know if you're going to your mum's that that I'm not going to mind you. No, and no, I'm in the and the morning and I don't. No. It's not. It's not about that. It, it's not about the control and I, I, I'd just like to know. But whereas if I if I didn't know that was going to your mum's. And I got up on like a Saturday morning and went to ring her and she didn't reply. Yeah. She didn't answer. Yeah. And then she didn't ring me back. And then like two days later she texted saying, Oh, I was at my mum's. Yeah, that's Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Into a bit of a frenzy. Yeah. And I know that but it's not that I'm control I don't care what you do. No, it's, it's just it's yeah. just like for me, if things are gonna be out of routine which is a massive thing. Yeah, for yeah. Life is easier yeah, if I know about yeah. it. You don't like, I'm going to say surprises, but they're not, I don't mean surprise party. Like, bringing something in to work that changes how Joe would normally work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Throw yeah. Joe completely because she wasn't prepared for it. But if you rang the day before and said, I'm going to bring this new table to work and I'm going to move the room around, what do you think? Yeah, brilliant. But yeah. if I just turned up and did it, yeah, 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 that's it. That you completely no. get it. Yeah, it it's just about being very mindful. I think you don't like that whole dropping. No, on you. anything. It could be tiny. It could be about food. It could be about any. Well, it is normally about food. Jeez, I think of food. It's usually food. It could be about absolutely anything. But that was what I always struggled with with my friendships. Was that people? People would think oh she's being controlling and i'll try and say it's it's not that i don't care what you do no. i mean obviously now it's very different because i can say to you i'm i'm autistic this is what i need but when i was younger i couldn't say that because i didn't know yeah which that must have been so hard it was because i just would think why is everyone calling me like when i know that's not what i'm doing like I, i'm really yeah. not and and i would find it so difficult like I used to live with somebody who would quite often go out. So, so if I was in work and she wasn't in work, like maybe we'd spoken the night before, and I and I'd said, "Oh, I'll ring you on my way back from work tomorrow to see what you know." Say, normal. That's not. If yeah. I hadn't heard from her all day, for example, and then I would try and ring when I was leaving work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know, I know that's not much of an arrangement as such, but to me it is. Yeah. Like, I'm ringing you on the way home from work to sort of what we're getting for tea. And that would be a massive rowing point for us. Mm. Because then I'd say, why didn't, why didn't you say to me, are oh, you being controlling? Yeah. Well, no, it's not. It's no, not it's just about that. keeping you informed. Yeah, it's and just. And knowing where you're at. Yeah, say to me, I'm going out for my tea. I'll be back at 9pm. And then oh, that, instead I would sit at home all night not having any tea. And she'd stroll through the door at like 8pm. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I've had my tea, yeah. And you sat there and I'm not having yeah, no, tea. No, 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 exactly. Scared to make it in case you're going to sit down to eat it yeah, and then yeah, she's yeah. going to walk from the well, door. Well, we'd arranged it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that. 
this is kind of the sort of thing I struggle with. Had I known then I was autistic, yeah, I might have been able to turn around and say, listen, you know, at the beginning of our friendship, I could have said, I, I need this, like I do yeah, with you. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's, I, you shouldn't have to tell me, but sadly, I need yeah. this to, to keep me sane. Yeah. You like to have very strict sort of rules and boundaries. Yeah, of, yeah, I of love what boundaries. you can and can't do, what's expected. Yeah, and, and it works both ways. Yeah, but but that helps you. And if it Massive just means way. somebody just being a tad more mindful, that's all. It, it just means. makes life so much easier for yeah, everybody. Because yeah. it's and not saying pleasant. everyone should have to like avoid me from having a meltdown. No, it's, not, it's not about that. Right. But but. I now know, and I don't feel uncomfortable now saying this is what I need. Mm. And you shouldn't feel uncomfortable. I don't, I don't, because it's a tiny thing, like it's no skin off, it wouldn't have been any skin off her nose to drop me a text, mm. take three seconds to say, going out for a tea, I'll see you at 9pm. Yeah. Like that, I see that now, that, that would not have been an issue at all. No. But obviously she didn't want to do it because she probably thought that I was yeah. doing it to be controlling yeah, and to be difficult. And to, yeah, or whatever. But it wasn't about that. How did you control that side of your personality, like the, in employment? When, well, when I've, always got been, I've always been the boisterous one. But people used to always say to me, like, I was boisterous in like a charming way. That was the words that they used to use. Yeah, it's not like... Like, I wasn't some big, like... Hey, you know, you're everyone not, you're not offensive, and it, yeah. it, it's done in good humour. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Just a nice <laughs> and it's not that I'm trying to be attention seeking. I go one of two ways in any sort of scenario. I'll either go dead quiet, which Nat has seen before, where we're going somewhere. So, like when we went into that Pizza Express at Perth, um, I'll either go dead quiet if there's too much going on around me, and then I'll just be like, I can't do this, yeah. I can't do so this. silent, and that's when I know something isn't right. Like, for Joe to be quiet, that's when he knows something is not quite right. I'd... <laughs> like, a lower volume. <laughs> I would prefer the louder Joe than the quiet one, because sort of louder Joe is, she's okay. Like, it, the yeah. quieter one is more concerning to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what's brewing? What, what, what is going to happen? So all, like, all through my, my actual working career, um, I was always boisterous. I was always a bit kind of. I just think because people knew I was good at my job, they just left me to it. Yeah. Like and and and, and I mean, I had a cup. I had a breakdown once at work, um, because I got a new <laughs> team leader. Just for some reason, it so certainly is. Yeah. Who the Still to this day, it upset me. So we always used to eat at our desks. Not. I'm not talking things like curry or chili or oh, anything. Too. Yeah, not like a big, like, but what is snacks, yeah. crisps. Yeah. There was a rule of you don't eat at your desks, but everybody kind of just did. Like, well, you, and you were you, you were office-based. You weren't sort of like... Yeah, no, I wasn't on the phone. No, I was, you weren't greeting the public no, no. from your desk. I was doing emails yeah. and, and searching for lost parcels. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was great. Yeah. Um, so it was like ringing around depots and ringing couriers and trying to find out what's happened yeah. and stuff to missing parcels. Um, so I just used to have like my sandwich on, on the desk. And anyway, we've got this new team leader called Anne Marie. And she was like a bit of a nightmare anyway, to be honest. I can't have my new thoughts. Um, <laughs> but, but, but one day I went to eat my ham butter and she started going sick of me. And was like, put your butty away. So I was like, what do you mean, put my butty away? She's like, put your butty away. So I said, but I said, I don't have a dinner. Yeah, you work I'm not, I work for a bit. And I said, I'm just sat eating your butty at my desk. Like, I'm not causing any problem. It doesn't, does it smell? You know? And I ended up having a breakdown because I couldn't eat my butty. But I don't mean, like, a kicking off breakdown. I mean, like, I was so upset about it because... I didn't understand why, for years, I'd been allowed to sit at my desk and eat yeah. my butter, and then just because one someone person, came in and changed, yeah, and changed it without telling Joe. So I have always struggled working for people because of things like that. Yeah. Like they're only little things, and, and and they're only doing their job as well. Yeah, they're not doing these things to be deliberately difficult or to upset people. No, that is no. just how they want things to be done, which they're entitled to. But because it was, you didn't 
know about that. And it was in the moment. If they'd have said, I I will always follow the rules. If she'd have started as the team leader and said, just to let you know, guys, we won't have any eating at the desk, blah, blah, blah. Then I would have been like, fine, no problem at all. Mm. Like when we were at Plaza. Yeah. We knew we couldn't have like things like that at desks. We could have bits of snacks, but we couldn't have things like that. We could eat your dinner, dinner. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. And as long as I know that, then I, I've not got a problem with it. It's things chopping and changing. It's things chopping and changing. That is the issue. So that is why I decided that I was going to just set up my own company. Because I thought, I'm so much better if I am like, in charge of stuff yes. for you to answer to yeah yeah and things can be, things can be done ma- the way that i want them to yeah. be done and you know people do understand that i'm not being picky or fussy because there's some stuff that i'm not bothered about but then there's some stuff that i'm so picky about and it can be the daftest thing like it is the daft folding thing. an invoice everyone knows about don't the fold the invoice don't do not fold a piece of paper and put it on joe's tray don't yes. remain flat at all times. Yeah, if I fold it and put it in your own tray. <laughs> but don't put it in but my now, tray. Now that I've seen Joe get upset about that, I know that it is much easier just to not fold. And, it, and, it, and my brain has to go, don't fold it, don't fold it, don't fold the invoice. But, but it, if, it's, if it solves the problem and stops you getting all... But I, and I always say to Nat, like, if, and I say, I wish I wasn't like this. I'm sorry that it annoys me. She's like, you don't have to don't apologize. Have to say sorry. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that this annoys me, but I can't help it that it does. Do you know it what I mean? It annoys me when she scrapes the bottom of a Tupperware with a fork. But that's what she does. But I, try, I do try again. Not I, I will try <laughs> not to. I am conscious because you'll see if I'm doing it. And then I'll like go. And I'll try and do it like We all have these little things. But <laughs> sadly, Joe has a lot of them. I know that you have um, had your diagnosis not really that long. But you were with me. I was with you. I had had a place of interest. Um, But obviously that's like when you were 32. 32 years to live without a diagnosis is a very long time. So what do you think changed or made that diagnosis sort of happen? Well, the first time anyone ever said, I think I must have been about 28, 29 years old, and um, I'd gone to hospital and they'd had a breakdown because I had to sit in the waiting room with everybody else, and I get so panicky if I'm around ill people and stuff. So I'd, I'd got myself really worked up about being in the hospital anyway. Um, and in the end, the crisis team ended up coming because I was getting myself so worked up. And then shortly after that, I had my gallbladder removed, and I was equally as as stressed as then as well. Up. Yeah. And these are the first sort of couple of times that anyone's ever turned around and said, "Oh, you you're a bit like you a bit like my friend, like or my son, mm. or do you know what I mean?" Um. And then it wasn't until I felt silly, and I went yeah. to the doctors. I think I must have been about thirty, and I said, "Listen, like I, I don't think this is the case, but this people." have thrown about that I could be on the autistic spectrum and I never because all you see in tv in movies Mm. is a stereotypical autistic person like rain man or or very it's it's really hard I don't know how to say this but like visibly yeah yeah visibly different rather than just Joe's brain is wired differently if that's the way to yeah like, like if I just met you in the street and didn't know you, I won't go, she's autistic. But, but people have this perception, don't they, of people who are autistic, the non-verbal, or the shouting and screaming. And, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? They have that this perception. You have to go to a special needs school. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always had that perception. You do, because that is all that is shown. Yeah. On, on films and on programmes. They don't show, like, because it's not entertaining, is no, it? No, no. To just show someone autistic who just gets over the day of a life normal yeah 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 to be entertaining but when people say to me you're autistic i would never have guessed and i feel like saying well you would never have guessed because of what i show to you yeah and also a very sort of like fleeting meeting yeah 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 you wouldn't guess because you're not sat with her or have her on the phone at night when she's worrying herself about what probably you and i would never spare a second thought for like people in that little instant they, they don't 
see that they don't see what you like you say what you cover up or adapt your way yeah 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 what is acceptable yeah instead of just letting loose this is it when people say that to me i just think well then i've done a good job at hiding it but you shouldn't have to hide it no but it's that inbuilt in me now it's that norm, it's just normal. It, as soon as I got my diagnosis, I was like, whoa, like, I don't have to pretend anymore. So I kind of... There's a reason why I yeah, think yeah, like yeah. this or so, feel like that. Well, like, you know, I do my running around in circles. Clapping. Clapping. Like, that, that, I <laughs> just... If people saw that, yeah, yes, you would think. She does that all the time. That's not just a little bit of excitement. No, I get. I have to get out on the excitement. Mm. So I run and run and run round. I mean, I can't really do it that much now. Um, go round and round. Since circle. Corona, I've got dead out of breath, so I don't think I could do it now. But um, yeah, I would run round and round and round and round in a circle, or like jump up and down, or spin. Flap it. I'll flap. I do flap this a lot. Or, 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 I, I can't keep still ever. Do you know what I mean? But, but even aside from that, when you sit next to Joe, her leg is always. Going. I'm always messing with something. Something fidget, fidgeting. I'm always. Well, it's, it's like you're watching this. Now and I've been this entire time I'm doing it. You can. You probably know me seeing my hand moving, scratching my leg, or messing about with my knee, or I, 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 I can't keep still ever. And ever. What's it like having an artistic friend? Because I bet there's other people out there who like would like to know what it's like or who can empathise yeah. with you on what it's like. I, I will admit it isn't the easiest. Because, like you're my first friend that I've known who is who has aut who is on the autistic spectrum. Like whilst I've worked with autistic children, they've been very visibly autistic. Yeah. Not not like your autism. Um no, it isn't easy. But but I don't ever think friendships are easy. Like you have they're like it's a relationship, isn't it? You work at it. If you want that friend, you accept them for for, for everything. Whilst I always say this, I'd like her to have a mute button sometimes or a volume dial. But that's partly me because I don't like loud noises. I don't even know how this friendship works sometimes because I, I, I don't like big volume. But but Joe is Joe. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't want her to change. That's how Joe is and I choose to be Joe's friend. No nobody makes me be a friend. But I think for anyone who has somebody in their life that it's being questioned, are they on the autistic spectrum? Read about things. Joe can't control the way her brain works. I'm sure she'd love to change certain things, but but if I read about them, I can learn how to sort of deal with those sort of traits that she has, her little quirks and things she likes. And I take that on board and I, and I try my hardest not to, to do those things that I know will irritate, because if that makes it easier for both of us, she's not getting wound up and I'm not having to cool down a potential either argument or, or meltdown what, what that there's no point in that is there no it's, it makes me really sad when people are like oh, she's autistic but how, how are you friends with her because i'm friends with joe i'm not friends with autism i'm friends with joe and that's the important bit isn't it i'm sure i do well i know i do a lot of things that annoy joe I wouldn't say annoy me, but, no. but that's because I don't get annoyed. No, you don't. You don't. Or, or you get annoyed at things that nobody else would ever Yeah, think yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, having an autistic friend has its benefits. She remembers everything. Great with directions, we're never lost. <laughs> this perks. Yeah, good with this perks. There's always snacks. Oh, yeah. Because we're obviously very food I think that might be the fact that I'm fat. No, no I, I think it's a double whammy. Oh, fat right. and autistic. Oh. Snack. Um, but I said this once on a live. What did I? It, what somebody? What did somebody ask us once? That what, something about Joe, and I said I would love to 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 have Joe's mind for like one day, like because what she has you, like it was like yeah. What what thing about Joe do I like the most? Obviously, I like her friendship. She's very kind. 
but I, I really like her innocence. Oh, that was yeah. it. It's like she doesn't see the bad in things sometimes, which at the same time can annoy me because people have took advantage of that. But you're much better at dealing with that now. Like, yeah. You will stand up for yourself. And yeah, you do stand not up for yourself. Not so much of a never, I never, ever let anyone push But I do like anymore. that innocent side to where she will believe the good things that people are telling her. Yeah, sometimes to your detriment, to my detriment. But, 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 but yeah, it's not easy, but friendships aren't easy. Who cares about autism? It's, it's just a on a bit of faith, I suppose. But it's nice for me, like, to actually have a friend who I don't have to hide anything from. I don't feel stupid if I have to ring up now, and I've never had that before. It, it's like it's like my mum for example so when i i used to be friends with some when i used to live with my friend and she would have a go at me a lot about um because i'm really funny without a date food and i think that's because it has a date on it my brain has to go to that date and she would like try and cook the food without me seeing that it was out of day, yeah. she'd be like serving me out of day food, knowing that that, that, yeah, so that, that yeah. would bother you. But, but sometimes, but then that got me so worked up because I used to think everything was out of day because I'd seen her doing it a couple of times. Mm. So I would sit at home, and because I was so frightened of letting anyone that I was with know, I used to pretend I was fine, but then I'd sit texting my mum, getting upset, saying, Am I going to be okay? Mum, I'm going to make me ill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like every, all, most nights I went yeah. through a phase of doing that. Because I got so worked up that the food I was eating was out of date, yeah. because it had been hidden from me a couple of times. Yeah. It was like a massive thing, but they, they, she didn't know what was going on below the surface, and that I was texting my mum and like, but now I can just turn around to that and say, I'm not eating that, I'm not comfortable eating it. And it's so if I've cooked, I will say to you, mate, I've made this, it's got this in it, this in it, this in yeah. it. Here's what it looks like, or I'll show you mine and then share mine with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want some? Like, because you can see, like, I, I wouldn't just say eat that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, you always break it down for me. Yeah. The first thing that annoys me is that whenever I say to anybody that I'm autistic, instantly, and, and every time it annoys me, and I see their, like, face go from, like, I'm an equal. Oh. So, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Are you? yeah. And I always go, oh, and then I can <laughs> see them change. Like, yeah. And I always say, I always say, don't feel sorry for me. I've got a proper good memory. I'm dead good with numbers. Don't, you know, don't feel sorry for me. That's, I see the face change. Yeah. And it yeah. really bothers me because I'm like, it's not, I don't want, you don't have to feel sorry for me. No. Like I'm fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm all right. I'm sorry, but you live on your own. You run a house. You run a business. Like you created yourself. Exactly. You drive a car. I have you a lot, lot of help. help. You know. No, I mean I have a lot of help. Yeah. I couldn't do those things alone. I do have help behind the scenes. But but that really annoys me. Like when they want to start feeling sorry for me. We're not here for a pretty No, day. and I get that, they get that face, and I always say, don't feel sorry for me. Honestly, there's good things. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I try and explain, but that is probably the most annoying thing, I would say. That annoys me so, so, so much. Yeah. Like, what would you say those sort of traits and indicators would be? Well, I do think it's important to discuss this because everyone thinks that autism is a boy illness. And the reason why is because girls and women mask it. We have that, I think we as women, we have that like thing about us to, we always want to please. Yeah. So I think that we naturally um, start copying people and, 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 you know, we try and fit in more. Yeah, you like mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a massive thing. So number one, I would say mirroring people's behaviours. Mm -hmm is a massive, massive thing. Um, and like interests and things like that. My other thing is I get so obsessed with things. Mm -hmm. So like, I can tell you everything about everything when it's something that I'm interested in. But then if someone's talking about something that I have no interest in whatsoever, yeah. I do not listen. I try, I really try, but it is so hard. But I think even those little obsessions go as far as like the food to eat. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So foods I eat, I, I'm so fussy. I will only eat. So, so I've got. Say I get in my head. Oh, I really, really, really like like corn, some dried nuggets, for example. Mm -hmm. Every day I have to have that. Yeah. And then it gets to the point where I think I'm eating that too much. I need to go on to something yeah. else. And and I, I will constantly have the exact same things going on. So that's a massive thing. And then my next thing is volume control. So all my life, I always remember being a kid and a teenager coming downstairs. My mum and dad would be like, why are you shouting? <laughs> I remember it. I remember living in, in Monton and constantly coming downstairs. Why are you shouting? You just lower your, lower your voice, Get you inside. <laughs> but, but, but I couldn't help it. But, but that can go like, we could be having a conversation and it can go like that and then all of a sudden, for no reason, oh, it just gets really loud. And like, in shops. Oh yeah. Shops are, are, are a loud experience. <laughs> but I think part of that is because you struggle to hear sometimes when it when there's oh, yeah, a lot of noises going I can't on. Listen to like, everything at once. You can only tune in on sort of one one noise. Yeah. So like if the, I, I do like music, but like say there's music on, and then someone's trying to talk to me, yeah. it really stresses me out. Yeah. I have to say, let me just turn this off a second. Yeah. Like I can't handle it. Um. So I, I mean, I love listening to music. <laughs> Say we were just all sat here doing a job where we were quiet all day long because we were like doing data entry or something. I'd have the radio on, no problem. But because we we um we will spend the day talking and things like yeah. that, it's too hard for us to keep saying, Let me just stop this a second, yeah. let me just so I find it so difficult and driving as well, like I will have the music on if I'm in the car on my own. But if I'm in the car with anybody else, it's just yeah, we, we, know, we don't have the music on no. together. But that's just because I can't be bothered with the whole Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. If we're like say we're going on a journey and we're putting the music on, yeah. we I'm like, right, let's let's put this on now and we'll sing along to it. And we'll both like do the journey singing along to it or something. But it's when we have to stop to talk and things, then yeah. I'm like, let me just stop this a second. Yeah. So just to butt in. No, it's I, fine. For me, I would I from my observations feel like people on the autistic spectrum are very it's very sensory yeah it is for me very. whether it be volume touch texture i don't like anyone touching me don't tastes. touch me i always don't touch me and i'm not autistic don't touch me <laughs> um it's very it's very sensory yeah textures tastes combinations com oh i can't like i cannot <laughs> combine food like <laughs> I don't understand how anyone can get one thing on the fork. Like, if you're having a cup breakfast, Joe wouldn't be able to do like a bit of bacon. Well, we don't eat it anymore, but you know, a sausage, yes. dip it in the eggs, a bit of beans. Yes. Like, you know, a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people do that. Well, yeah. I think most people yeah. do. You I can separately. Everything has to be in an order and separately. Um, and it has to be, if I got in my head that I don't like something. Even if I try it and I like it, I still can't like it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It, it's weird. Mm. It's weird. And then, like, so people touching me, I don't like people touching me. Anybody. It really makes me feel incredibly, incredibly peculiar, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> incredibly peculiar. Very good. Um, what else do I do? So we've talked about the clumsiness. We've spoke about that, haven't we? Spatial awareness. And the spatial awareness. I am not. Zero. No spatial awareness. Honestly, I swear to God, I have zero space. I just bash into stuff, Nick. Always covered in bruises. I literally just walk into things. Oh, think... And oh, we'll always pick the longest route. Let's say we're in a shop. We'll always go the longest way, but through the way you're not meant to go, instead of just going that way. But sometimes things look too open. And I want to like go through a more enclosed <laughs> bit. Oh, another thing. I always have to have like something like a blanket or something over me. I I can I could not mm. sleep without a blanket on me. And if I'm on the set here, like watching TV, I have to have something over my legs, even if it's boiling. I always have to have a drink near you. Oh, if I don't have a drink near me, all hell breaks loose. Yeah, yeah. And I have to. I get really worked up if I don't have a drink near me. Really worked up. I mean, I sound. It sounds mad, doesn't it? All this stuff. Yeah. But then on the other hand. I'm dead good. I'm obsessed with postcodes, so I know pretty much every yeah. single postcode in the country. Disney films, I can tell you anything about anything. 
um, memory in general. I think is your yeah. big memory's like my yeah. my good thing. Like I can turn around to you and say, yeah, but three weeks ago at two p.m. you said that. Did I? And that's like I don't remember that. I know that. But, but then you look at me and you're like, do you remember? And I'm like, but you said <laughs> it. But you said <laughs> it. <laughs> And she's like, but I don't really, I'm like, but you said it. And, it, and I'm like, why don't you understand? Why don't yeah. you remember? Like, it's mad. But weirdly, can't remember people's names. I'm not, I'm good not very good with like facial recognition, but you can remember everything else. I can remember the name, I think, if it's like been written down in paper and I'm not seen. And I don't know. I think it's all yeah. to do with what you look like. I think I get in the head somebody must have this kind of name and then that's yeah, it. Yeah. I don't bloody know. There's a lot. But I would say they're the main ones that, for me, like looking in, would yeah. be like the key flags. Of, oh, I, I can't have like jewellery or um, anything jangly. Like I buy jackets, but they come off the second I walk in. I'm too hot, I get myself all yeah. restricted. I can't be restricted. Like in my clothing, like it really, really winds me up, and I, I can't wear a lot of textures. So, like, do you know the worst texture in the world is you know when you go in a car. What? You don't like microfiber cloth? No, I don't like microfiber cloth. It's similar. You know when you go in a car and you touch the car roof. <laughs> That's it for me. I've been like it my whole life. I don't like the window open in the car. Oh no, you just got sweat because the. Well, no, it's I, the noise. I, it's it? the noise that really gets to, gets to me. I mean, there's, there's, the, we could probably do another one. <laughs> we could about talk it, to for another fair. hour about it. Well, we can probably talk about. We can probably do one where we talk about autism and relationships. That might be yeah, a good yeah, one to do. Yeah. Or autism and dating. Because mm -hmm. we're. Do you know what we're gonna do? Like a, a being fat and dating sort of thing. Yeah. We can oh, another thing I say inappropriate things, and I say like. And I don't have a filter. No, there's no filter. No. No. <laughs> but if you do want to know any more, you want us to expand on any of this, if you've got a friend who you think could be autistic, or if you yourself think you could be autistic, what we've done um, in, the comments in the comments below, we've added on some handy links um, and some charities that you can contact if you do feel like you want to explore this further for yourself or for somebody else um, because it has changed my life having a diagnosis has made me it's weird because you know when they say like you're being labeled and put in a box it freed me from the box being given the label because I, I felt comfortable then to say this is what I need and there was clarity on everything for me then so if you do feel like you or your children or your partner or your friends or even somebody you work with, if you do feel like this is this sounds a bit like them, you know, and they want support, mm -hmm. we I mean, it it could be because I never ever realised and never thought that I could be on the autistic spectrum ever, and and that's come from what we see. In the yeah. media and how we see it portrayed, it's always in a specific light, isn't it? Mm. Um, but I feel that there's a lot of programs out there at the minute. So, 80 people on Netflix is well a worth a watch. Really, really good one if you want to learn a lot about. And I don't like this term, but high functioning autism. And you will hear me refer, and Joe, refer to us as Sam and Zahid. Sam being the autistic guy on the, the, the main character of the program, Zahid, his non-autistic neurotypical. neurotypical best friend. So it's very much like me and Joe. So I, please watch that. I liked that show because it was somebody who was going to a mainstream school, had a job, didn't look in any way <laughs> like he was on the spectrum. Very intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like he struggled with things like the eye contact and stuff. Yeah. Same. I mean, there's so much we can go into, but we're going to have to end it here for today. Um, but if you do want us to expand more on anything we've spoken about today, please do drop us a comment. Send one of us an inbox on Facebook. Let us, let us know what you want to see, and we're more than happy to talk about it. Thanks, guys.
thanks again guys don't forget thumbs give us up. a thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe to our channel because when we get to 500 we're going to be giving away a 50 pound voucher for www.topsyfirm.co.uk bye